What are lessons learned from fighting at Lushan? Lushan is a city in Liaoning, China that was the site of a major battle during the Chinese Civil War. The battle began on November 12, 1948 and lasted for three weeks. In the aftermath of this battle, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, was able to consolidate its power and gain control over all of China. Chiang Kai-shek was the president of China until July 3, 1949 when he lost the support of the military who then forced him to resign. The civil war is often attributed to Chiang Kai-shek's attempts to maintain his power and influence in China. By attempting to resist Mao Zedong's reforms, Chiang exacerbated tensions between himself and Mao and eventually led to the CCP gaining control of China. The Kuomintang and communists had both been fighting for control over China since the early 1920s, but they had yet to reach a truce until after World War II. The political conflict between them only escalated when Chiang Kai-shek lost all of the military support in 1949, forcing him to resign from his leadership. The Kuomintang lost its legitimacy because of its dictatorship and unwillingness to institute democratic reforms. The communists had gained the support of many Chinese people, especially peasants in the country's poorer regions. In October 1949, they gained control of China's government when Mao Zedong declared the formation of a new nation known as People's Republic of China. This event marked the end of the Kuomintang's rule and the beginning of a period of political tension with the communists. The Kuomintang is known for its reforms, which helped the KMT gain power. The Kuomintang sought to modernize China, but failed to do so during the late 1920s early 1930s because of their authoritarian government. In the early 1930s, it was clear that this strategy would not work, and the Kuomintang was forced to institute a more democratic reforms in order to appeal to the masses. In this time period, the Kuomintang implemented many reforms including land reform, which redistributed land from large landowners to small farmers. And tax reform, which reduced taxes for poor farmers, and industrialization policy, which allowed for foreign investment. It was in this time period that Chiang launched the Xinhai Revolution, which ended in him becoming the leader of China. To strengthen his power base, he declared a war on opium, a product brought over by Chinese from India and Pakistan as an intoxicant popular amongst peasants and workers. The Kuomintang pursued these policies to improve the lives of the Chinese people and eventually turn China into a world power. The Chinese Civil War, 1927-1950 After Zheng's death, Liu Shaoqi took over as president. He was recognized for his role in the Communist Revolution, but he also used nationalism to gain support from the public. He pursued policies that emphasized industrialization, collectivization, and the building of highways. The Communist Revolution led to the Chinese Civil War that lasted from 1927 to 1950. This is when Mao Zedong first took over as head of the People's Republic of China. He established an autocratic state in an effort to transform China into a world power. What is the significance of the Russo-Japanese Treaty? The Russo-Japanese Treaty was a peace treaty between Russia and Japan signed in 1905. It was the first time that the two countries agreed to end hostilities and establish diplomatic relations. The Russo-Japanese Treaty is significant not just because it brought peace between two countries, but also because it marked a turning point for Japan's modernization. The treaty ended Russia's influence over Japan, which led to the rise of Japanese nationalism. It also helped to set up a relationship between the two countries that would eventually lead to World War II in 1941. The Treaty of Shimoda is significant not just because it brought peace between two countries, but also because it marked a turning point for Japan's modernization. The treaty ended Russia's influence over Japan, which led to the rise of Japanese nationalism. The Treaty of St. Petersburg became the only treaty Japan had with any country outside of China. The treaty allowed for trade between Russia and Japan and Russia's entrance into Hokkaido after the treaty was signed. Russia was allowed to establish trading offices in Japan, and Russia also gained access to the Coral Islands after the treaty signing. The first treaty was the Treaty of Peace, Friendship, and Commerce between Japan and China in 1905. This treaty helped to eliminate problems of piracy against ships from China coming to trade with Japan. The treaty also created a railroad that would connect Shanghai to Yokohama. The Treaty of Friendship, Peace and Commerce was the first treaty of a series that would eventually lead to several other agreements. 
The Tripartite Alliance was established in 1907 by Japan, Great Britain, and Russia. This alliance was created to establish collective defense against China's territorial ambitions. The alliance consisted of the three countries sharing intelligence, foreign policy, and defense. However, this alliance would only last until World War I. This was a major source of tension between Japan and China because it represented an implication that China's territorial claims had been settled. The tension eventually led to the Sino-Japanese War, 1937, in which Japan defeated China. How did Russia's war with Japan start? Russia's war with Japan started in 1904 when Russia and Japan were fighting over the island of Sakhalin. A war started between Russia and Japan when the two were fighting for control over the island of Sakhalin. There are no roads on the island and it is littered with unexploded ordnance. Only 5% of the population lives in areas that have been cleared of mines. The island was originally inhabited by the Ainu people, who were highly skilled in hunting and gathering. They were eventually forced out by Japanese settlers who came from mainland Japan, which is part of Asia. The Japanese settlers brought with them their culture, mostly Buddhism and Shintoism, as well as a language called Ryukyuan. The first European to visit the island was Captain James Cook in 1778, who reported that there were no signs of human habitation. During World War II, when Japan invaded the Philippine Islands and American forces entered Okinawa in 1945, many Japanese living on the island fled to mainland Japan. After Okinawa reoccupied by American forces in 1972, many of these people returned to their homeland. As the Ryukyu Kingdom was a tributary state of China, the people living in Okinawa often sent tribute to China. This is one of the reasons why many Chinese artifacts and texts have been found in Okinawa's archaeological sites. After Okinawa reoccupied by American forces in 1972, many of these people returned to their homeland. In 2008, the Okinawa Defense Bureau announced that it found a treasure trove of Chinese ceramics in Yamaden. There are a number of Chinese characters on inscriptions on these pots which have been translated as ancient or old.